So first, um, let me congratulate you as national chairman of the party on winning another election. Uh, how do you feel about that? Well, definitely I feel good that we have not lost to the NDC. We are still in power, uh, convincingly so, except that we lost uh, a few seats and therefore uh, we have a hung parliament. But I would have preferred we had more seats in parliament. So the president has secured his mandate now that the election petition is also over. Um, I understand that you've been going around the regions on a regional tour. What has that been all about? We've gone for election, very grueling election and a good fight. But there are a few challenges. We need first to go and pat the back of our members the, from the various constituencies to talk to them tell them that we appreciate what they've done so far. But again, it's an election where almost always, when we go after each election, national election, we need to review what happened. How did we do what we did? What was wrong or what was right? What should we do again? Or what should we do again? We evolve new strategies, appreciate uh, the situation as it is and then evolve this strategy for the next elections. Exactly that's what we want to do. And indeed, in the election, we could, one thing that was clear, that the votes of the president was... Had dropped. Not, not dropped as such. It's OK. 500,000 votes, quite... Different. Okay. 500,000 votes, 500, different. Very, when you're in your, your second term, and uh, you have a... A lot of baggage, and therefore, naturally, you may drop. Okay, but is it that us. you're disappointed at what the vote count was? Because in the last elections, you won by what more than a million well, it's, votes. It's, this it's, time, we were um, not. We were, we were expecting that the voters, will, the votes will come up more because of the conduct of our government, the performance of that government what we thought a lot of developments and policies that we've a program that we have uh, initiated and i implemented we, 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 we were expecting as a party we we're expecting that the votes will appreciate still on the vote count ashanti region from what i understand you didn't get as much of the votes as you expected i i gather that from the quantum of people who registered in Ashanti, you didn't see that much increase. In fact, a, a drop of 1.5%, no. 1.5 uh, uh, million. Uh, we will dispute that because we were, the last time it was a 1.6, now it was roughly 1.8. We appreciate it. But you still quality. didn't have... We were control. thinking that the NDC wouldn't have much. NDC had about uh, six, over 600. 600 Indeed, that's the, the biggest vote that NDC had in the whole country. And uh, we were a little disappointed that it happened that way, but that's elections for you. So for your regional tour, you've been in Ashanti? We've done that. We've done in a uh, greater Bono. part of Greater Accra. So yes. Ashanti, Bono East, Ahafo, what's their feeling about how things went? They want government to continue pursue the policies that is big. They want more roads. They want the schools to improve. Are they the complaining country. that the party isn't doing enough for them as party members? Well, that, that, that I wouldn't even like to talk about it here with you. But of course, people had their own complaints, internal complaints of what's going on and what they are not happy of. In some cases, they have expressed satisfaction of uh, the way we conducted our campaign and uh, the way the president went around all over the country, they appreciated it. Bono East, Bono and uh, Ahafu were appreciative. I think you did very well in, in those areas. We did generally. quite well, yes. but our uh, seats did not increase. increase. In fact, we lost, in some cases, we lost yeah. a few. Okay. But I think your major loss really was in the central region. When are you going there? We've not yet drawn out the program, but quite soon, 
we will be there. Okay. Be there. Any reflections upon uh, those losses of seats in the central region? Because the kingmakers are a greater Accra central region, and your former region. Uh, yes, we lost a few Western. seats. As and in central, around, you you lost quite. Um, we what, lost six, we lost quite uh, about six, six or so. Six but seats. As I said, that's elections. Unpredictable. It's it's a normative science. Anything could change. We need to review our strategy. What do you think Hello. is the problem in Central Region? Central Region one, we had problems with the coast. Uh, that's concerning the uh, premix. Premix. People mm -hmm. said they weren't getting access. Yes, uh, we we had problems with areas where they were and they're taking galamse mining areas, mm -hmm. and a lot of our people, particularly in the mining area, Western Central, and indeed mm -hmm. even part of Ashanti. A lot of people uh, were not very happy with the policies over Galamse and therefore did not come out to vote for our but uh, our MPs, you know, our PCs, they refused to, to do so. And there were internal factors that contributed towards uh, what we refer to as uh, scattered rows. Yes. Some did not. Some they gave, for the they gave the president their vote, but yeah, not the MP. Not. I mean, isn't that an indictment more on the MP than the president? Because if there's a policy and the party has sanctioned it, isn't it the job of the MP to emphasize why this is important? The policies on Galamse were meant to save our water bodies. We did. We argued it out. Well, but, you know, it's a question of uh, bread and butter for some people irrespective of what you are saying, they are staying on the land and they, that's where they live on and they didn't sometimes some of them don't even care about the pollution of the water we needed to uh, fashion out our communication we need to do very well by letting them how, come how with do us you respond and find them alternate uh, alternate forms of livelihood form of life okay but how do you respond to accusations and i guess these have been investigated but we've not seen a conclusion where the view is that it is senior party members who have been involved in Galamse and if anything the party brought this upon themselves. This is a, a wrong perception. We are leaders of the party. Uh, I'm talking about the 10 people who went around in the country. None of us are involved in the Galamse. The regional chairman are not involved. They have they brought up a complaint that this should not continue. That accusation that the party leadership itself, the government leaders are directly involved in Galams. I think it's a wrong perception and it's propaganda. It's not correct. Mm. All right, let's come back to Greater Accra. So the tour has started in Greater Accra. I understand you are going round today. What will you be telling uh, people in Greater Accra? First of all, members? as I told you, we'll be greeting them and telling them that We've done well. Thank you. It's a thank you. Thank you. Tell them less. We've done it. But well, it was not the best performance in Greater Accra. But we want to also know the opinion from the various constituencies, the members, the, 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 the organizers on the ground, the youth leaders, to let them let us know what exactly do they think. We, and indeed, we are chronicling all these things. We're telling them we put up and have the report on it. Okay. We sent up a committee to go around to ask for opinions and uh, tell the facts as they were, what happened and uh, what do they expect to change, how do we move on so that we could give a good beating to the NDC. We're talking about all these things. What's your outlook for the party over the next four years? You have a lot of work to do. I mean, in the first term, it was really more about free SHS. There's Not a lot of free well, there's a lot of complaints about we bad roads. Have flag staff, flag, flagship projects, bad roads. The bad roads were inherited. It's not that we came immediately. We came. The roads turned bad. The roads have been bad all this while, except that when we came, we said, "Look, let's focus on roads." In 2019, but before we did that, no COVID came. COVID came. All right. So and for for, for 2021 to 2024. Apart from, of course, free SHS, what are your, what's your big agenda? Well, we said that in our manifesto. We said that we will do more of what we were doing. 
and uh, we, particularly you mentioned roads. Yes. And incidentally, when we went round all our uh, regional. constituencies, regional projects, we're all talking about road contracts that in some cases people have even gone away from the site and so forth. We need to increase that because this country depends on roads for to it to, be, to expand its economy. We're going to do that. And uh, one D, one, uh, one D, one, one district, D, one F, one F, planting for, planting food, for and jobs. food and jobs. This year, the government is going to focus on housing, particularly in the urban areas. And so we want to put in more effort and to ensure that there is housing and discipline on our roads. So these are some of the it seems that some party members, in spite of whatever complaints they have yeah. about um, not you know, having the kind of development they want or the jobs they were looking for or an opportunity to really just benefit from their party in power, uh, some members have gone ahead to launch campaigns, break the eight presidency campaign. Um, first, is that sanctioned by the party? No, it's not been sanctioned by the party. We've even had opportunity to talk to uh, the media for it. And uh, we are coming out with even uh, some rules governing the engagement. Okay. Uh, but don't you have rules already governing the engagements? Uh, when we talk about conduct, code of conduct, okay. how to behave, how to conduct affairs, how to... How to conduct yourself prior to our asking people to file uh, to contest various uh, positions. We think it is too early Okay. and the party hasn't come out with a program of elections. We need to start first of all by organizing very well a congress this year. And probably all these Maybe issues from the regions will, will, come, will up. come up. Resolutions there. from the regions mm -hmm. will come up and we will talk about their concern, express concern policies that they think they want government to pursue regional complaints just as what we are doing. We expect them to put them on paper and they will bring back, bring all these things forward to the Congress. Okay. The resolutions I, to be read. I know now, the NPP constitution mm -hmm. mandates that when you are in office, you don't elect a flag bearer till what, a year before? You know it very well, a little more than a year most before. people do. Well, when you have, there is there are the constitution talks of when we are not in office, office when and when you are in office. Good. When we are in office, at least 11 months, months before election, yes. then we could elect yeah. our flag bearer. The reason why I'm asking this is, um, is it possible that in other peculiar situations, maybe this may have to be looked at in the wake of the campaigns that are being put forward for people's preferred candidates, even though the government hasn't even gotten off uh, to working. So, for instance, knowing that President Akufuado will not be running um, at all, maybe to remove this problem of people peaking before time, you specify that, look, maybe for this kinds of circumstances where there's a president in office, he's not running again, we probably bring that forward so that this matter is dealt with um, quickly. Well, it should be decided. Uh, we were talking about it, but it's better. We don't want... Uh, the president have four years mandate. We don't want him to be distracted, the government to be distracted. Uh, government must perform. It must deliver. Based on that, individuals could ride on the back of the party, on the ticket of the party towards achieving their ambitions. So we will prefer we all work together collectively to achieve uh, what the party has set itself up to do, the manifesto more so. But coming to that, what is destructive about it is that invariably some individuals may even end up criticizing each other within the party and even criticize the president. So you're afraid so it will give fodder to the opposition they will to go against? Not only give fodder for the opposition, it will, it will be destructive. We infighting, factionalism will, will distract us from doing what we are supposed to do. The president may have to now settle disputes and so forth and so on. And we prefer that let's spend a little time to achieve. Definitely there will be time for, for 
people to file their papers and even get into nearer to it. Social media, we can't control it. Some yeah. will do some kind of campaign, but it shouldn't be too excessive and yeah. reckless to the extent that there will be people insulting each other. What I do want to ask, though, the president has made his appointments, and I do see that one person who had indicated his willingness to contest, he remains an MP, though, his willingness to... So what happens to a person like that? He's not appointed. Can he go about and campaign then? Yeah, that's why we see that we will uh, come out with... Uh, a code, code of, of conduct, conduct to guide everybody. To guide everybody. All right. Yeah. You talk about the government implementing its manifesto, and yeah. it's a manifesto of the party, That's right. ultimately. One would have thought that for a second term, the president would have quickly made his appointments. Because in the first term, yes, sometimes you're not sure, you're still speaking to people. But for a second term, some of us would have thought that this would have happened quickly. But somehow, we just have the ministers, regional ministers, we haven't really heard much about deputy ministers. Boards are still in place. MMDC is still, you know, undertaking their jobs for the meantime. Um, what's the holdup? I wouldn't say there's a holdup. It's, uh, it's not completely. It's we, we're less than three months from the time that we had election. It's a new government. Let's accept it. But of course, first of all, you need to go to parliament and then the approval of ministers that have been Yes, but you take, you, you take your list there. If your, you list, your list is there. complete, no, it's up to them. It, it's complete. If it's complete, you send it to them. They will have to be vetted. And you, you can't even appoint uh, deputy ministers. Um, president can't appoint the deputy without consulting the substantive ministers. That's what it is. They will have to wait. And the president has reduced the number of it's been indicated. Is going to reduce the number of deputies or fat ministers on, on the whole. And for that matter, it's not easy making choices among a plethora of very competent individuals within the government. And therefore, there needs to be more consultation. And I believe it's not too long. Sooner than later, the list will come out. And then uh, other nominations with regards to the MMDCs. And then, of course, uh, CEOs and so forth will also come. You talk about the vetting of the finance minister happening Thursday. Um, the government has come under some criticism following the budget reading, which was read on the finance minister's behalf by um, Honorable Osei Chairman. Criticism from the opposition, I believe. I beg your pardon, sir. No. Yes. There are many, there are Ghanaians whom we have spoken to on yes. radio, yes. TV, yes. who, and even on social media, people yes. expressing their own individual views. Fair enough. Criticizing the additional uh, tax burden that many of us are going to have to bear. In an era of COVID, where we want to stimulate spending, we want to stimulate um, investment in the economy, one would have thought that you wouldn't be taking away from the citizens well you, you approve of you approve of this as national taxes, chairman as taxes not just the taxes but the the issues raised in the budget but what the, the, to the taxes the, we, we discussed it we discussed the budget before it came up at, at some level you right? didn't think that this would generate some angst among the citizens um if i let me tell you nobody is happy paying taxes it's like that it's an obligation. It is a social obligation. Now, government has to rely on taxes to develop the country. Apart from all other things, primarily, you develop on, you depend on taxes, directly or indirectly, to develop your country. The, the kitty is small. We needed a whole lot of the social roads, and of course, COVID had even led to revenue being dwindling and so forth. We find you said that there should be productivity so to be enhanced so that uh, there will be more in terms of the cake swelling but how do you go about it you don't you need to not borrow too much already over time government has borrowed too much from outside interest rates is on the rise so we need therefore 
to at least hurt yourself a little by paying more taxes so that you can pursue and execute uh, projects that you've put yourself up. Not only projects, but a lot of other expenditure that you have to do. You have to pay for uh, the, the NHIS, a free education for children. I, and so for that, I, I don't think people are complaining so much about the taxes as opposed to the, the specific tax and what it's for. For instance, the um, energy sector levy, for instance, the president in his State of the Nation address indicated that we had paid off the majority of our debt. Why do we still have uh, ESLA if we have to use that money to pay for excess capacity? We didn't ask for that. Well, uh, it's, 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 it's excess capacity that you're talking about was not was an obligation that had been imposed on government for a long time. You signed to pay for barges, produce energy for us that maybe we don't need, but we signed for it. Mm. The other one is the banking sector we were, levy. Mm -hmm. Banks who had nothing to do with this crisis in 2018 now have to pay for this. They're going to pass it to you and I. It's not only to, to you and I because uh, it's a financial sector uh, yes, but sanita sanitization. But the reality is that how does one justify I had nothing to do with this problem I've been managing my, my affairs properly, some other group of people caused this and then I have to pay to offset that debt. It's, it's, it's imposed on the financial... It, and it the, seems you didn't even engage with the sector, uh, with the bankers to get them on board. That's the, don't the say that you didn't engage with the bankers. I believe the finance ministry did so. Engage with the governor of the bank and all the other commercial banks. So we discussed it with them. And they are making quite sufficient profits. We say give a little to help sanitize the sector. I think it is fair. Okay. And I guess the final levy I will issue or levy I would raise has to do with the COVID levy. Um, and not to belabor the point, certainly when COVID happened, we spent quite a bit. We spent um, 181 million Ghana cities on electricity, 300 million on free water, 5.43 million cities on free food for 470,000 vulnerable families. This was really laudable. I think it was one of the things that people were I'm so glad you've seen that happy about, on. even for, for three months. Yes. But then now we have to pay a COVID levy. I know there's been um, clarification brought that this COVID levy is not to offset those debts or those costs incurred. But we, we had um, more than 42,000 people who lost their jobs. We are all in this struggle. To, I can understand uh, the other levies, NHIS, um, an additional levy on VAT and all that, dealing with free SHS. But then, this COVID levy... But we, we, we're going to have vaccine all over this country. Everywhere else in the world, people are having vaccine. You need to pay for that. It costs a lot. Right? I thought the vaccine was free. The vaccine? Free from where? From the COVAX facility, I understand that what we are paying for is just the operational activities. Yes, but people are asking the for importation, importation and operational, yes. getting all the importing, you pay for it. You don't, it's not free. You don't just go to the market and everybody give it to you free. Some may come by way of a donation, and so, but you need to pay substantially for what you are importing to vaccinate, vaccinate your, uh, your citizen. And so forth, you need to pay for it. And there are other ancillary costs that need to be taken care of. Mind you, COVID is not gone. Indeed, we've been able to manage it well. This is the best management of the COVID in all in the sub-region. And that is, it costs money to manage it. And you, you can't have it for free and think that uh, maybe Providence will take care of it. You need to manage and pay for the management. That's what it is. So, based on all you're saying, can you just clarify for me then, What's the party's view on subsidies, freebies, um, any policy that relates to that? What's the party's position on that? Well, we need to pay subsidies. Sometimes we need to give away a few things. We have a social conscience. And therefore, when the vulnerable in the society needs to be taken care of, we agree that there ought to be some kind of uh, freebies 
to some extent. But on the whole, we want to do business. We want to liberate, create an environment and make sure that individuals who work, produce, and therefore taxes can come out from it and people will be able to take care of it. In this country, people are capable of doing so once we create the environment. And MPP government and Nalanando. Let's talk about an issue that I know is very sensitive. What is it? This has to do with the Volta region. Where you come from? Well, I do come from there. Yes. Your wife also comes from there. That's true. So I guess we are all in that boat together. We are together. You broke a 28-year jinx and you now have an NPP MP for Hohoi. One. We were not too satisfied with it. No problem about that. But I guess the view is that a lot was done in that area to get Mr. Mewu into office. Doesn't that show that the region has not had that kind of attention, that kind of investment, and it shows what can be done if you do try? Why not? I agree with you that a lot can be done if you do try. And we don't only isolate one region. And we are saying that we definitely work hard towards the water region as a party. And there used to be a time when Kufour was campaigning. It reaches Soga Kope on the, on the river side at the, the uh, what is it, the, the bridge. And the people would be hooting at him. That was 20 years ago. Well, a few exactly. years ago. But things are changing. Yes. Now people, particularly the youth in the Volta region, the attitude is changing. Particularly women, they realize that. And they can sing, sing uh, MPP songs. Now it's not an anathema to be a member of MPP in the Volta region. So we're giving ourselves a little more time. Fortunately, as you said, we won just a seat over there. That's it's not the first time the MPP has won seats in the Volta region when it was the full Volta region. Well, mainly we from Akan. the Akan. But even there, you, in, in, in it, the OT region yes, now. Yes, in the OT region now. But you didn't sweep that region as I actually thought you may because of the. Creation. We were not expecting to sweep. We were working hard there. But if you look at the trend of the world, you see that it's, it's gone up it's massively, appreciated. And therefore, 2024. It, the story may be a different yes. one. So Even you, in the so, Volta so region. Will you, will you undertake a specific strategic engagement for the Volta region? I will not discuss that with you, but I can assure you that our attitude towards the Volta, MPP attitude towards is strictly more engagement. I what challenge they, that because in as much as you may be doing work there, the members of your party whose narratives, whose commentary, whose conduct, make the Volta region seem like they don't deserve to be part of this country, they don't deserve any of the good things that you're Jifa, offering elsewhere. Jifa, Jifa, it is entirely wrong. If some people raise that, uh, those uh, complaints or raise those issues, perception, too high. It's all perception. Uh, perception. So aimed the party is committed at, okay. to improve the engagement in the Volta We're doing region. that. As, and, as and you said, me, as an individual, I go there more often than any other <laughs> region. And not because I'm going to visit my family. Uh, but you go do members. a lot of work. A there. lot of work. I have okay. very good friends there. So please, don't have that perception that this party is anti water region all right. at all. Um, you became chairman of the Ghana National Petroleum Corporation. I was since uh, 2017. Has that been fulfilling for you? Uh, well, to some extent, yes. Being a chairman of this very important corporation, to some extent, but it's still room for improvement. We, we, we are happy with what we're doing, particularly GMPC Foundation, in terms of what it's been doing for the Western region. But it's not limited to the Western region. I know that. It's all over the country. Yeah. You hope to continue in that role? I'm not the one to determine. It's the president. but. Mm. Possibly, I'm going to do that. It's, it's probable. <laughs> because it's an opportunity for you to also still give back in a different way to yes. your region. Yes. All right. Thank you very much, Honorable uh, Freddie. It's been wonderful speaking to you uh, again.